Hi there, my name is Johnny Johnson, and you are watching Sailing with Johnny. Tonight, I'm going to sit down with my friends Sean and Dave, and we're going to talk about the day I went sailing with Dave aboard Juan Solo, and Sean lost his mast. Tell us a little bit about your boat, Juan Solo. So Juan Solo is a San Juan 24. Um, it is a, a classic racer cruiser built back in the 70s. So mine's a 1972 model. Um, I'm actually hold number 20. The boat was built in the uh, Pacific Northwest in Kent, Washington, and it was designed just for the inland waters here. And um, it's a great boat. We love it. It's got a great one design class that we uh, have our North Americans that every year. And um, it's just an all around great um, boat to have. And you had an interesting adventure. We did. <laughs> Certainly we did. Um, yeah, so I was uh, sailing on my, uh, my old Olympic star, uh, Rialta is what we named it. Um, it's a great boat. This, this boat actually won the gold medal for the United States back in, 19, in the 1984 Olympics. This actual so this, boat. That specific boat. So it's Very a cool. great piece of history. I, this was probably our fourth or fifth time out. Me and my crew, who I sailed with a bunch back on the high school team uh, and a few other times, Pretty, pretty big swells we were we were fighting. The wind didn't seem too bad. It just seemed like it was a big sea state. So yeah. um, we're sailing upwind up towards the starting line, and the wind just keeps building. The, the weather gets bigger, as, as I'm sure you know, because you were, you were out there that day. Yeah. Um, and we decided, you know, we weren't really happy with how the rigging was set up on that boat. We were still trying to work through a couple kinks with our knowledge on this boat um, and some of the rigging itself. So we decided to turn around and head back to the marina um we go through attack bearing away to head back downwind um right as i'm queuing up the microphone to retire from the series um we hit a puff right as we're going down the face of a wave uh -huh. and my crew releases the backstay as on this boat you have to release the backstay to release the boom the boom only goes out a couple feet before we have to release the backstay okay um so he lets the backstay off the mass goes forward deflects to leeward and snaps right at the sh right at the spreaders where the shrouds connect up at the top of the mast. I called out to the because we were all on the same channel for for race committee. So I called you know sail fleet sail fleet. Um, our mast is down, no injuries, but we require assistance. Uh, and everyone just came around. Great group of sailors, that's for sure. Oh, They're yeah. always willing to help. Yeah. Um, Byron got me on the. He was towing us in the with the committee boat. That was a rough ride there for a while because we were going across the face of the waves. Wow. So my, my crew is standing up on the front of the boat trying to hold the mast off the deck and just getting destroyed on these rollers. So eventually we turn with the waves and I think it was Obi-Wan that picked us up and took us the rest of the way in yeah. so that Byron could go out and have the rest of you all race, yeah. um, which worked out well for everyone. But it was, uh, yeah, that was quite a moment. That was a weird day wind-wise. I think... We were sitting like 10 to 12 knots sustained, but the gusts, at least I was talking to someone at the weather station afterwards, that like gusts over 20 knots just all of a sudden would hit. It was really deceptive because there, there weren't white caps out no. there, but there were big rollers. And, mm -hmm. and Which I think is what, had we known how windy that was, we wouldn't have left the dock, I don't think. That boat, well, and, and, I've, and then talking to some people that I know that have sailed stars before, uh, they say, yeah, anything over about 20, 22 knots is is pushing the rig that's when people start breaking things uh -huh. um so we might have not left the dock had we known what the weather conditions looks like but those rollers are deceptive because it takes all the white caps out yeah. so if you're if you're cruising along and you hit a puff it's you're not going to see it so it was it was rough but it wasn't it, it was about as best case scenario as it could have been in that situation i think the rig broke no injuries my crew got a little scrape with the when the backstays came out of the boat because he released the backstays and as soon as he did the rig came down so it just pulled pulled them to their knots uh -huh. so the wires just kind of because they sit right between us we sit on other sides of the backstay so it scraped them a little bit coming up but nothing more than a little than a little rash little cut which was lucky that could have been a lot worse yeah um and then the way that it broke and fell um the mast didn't rub on the deck at all so the deck the hole itself no damage to that at all so Good. and the sails no rips to the sails nothing that so it's just the rig which you know isn't a isn't a cheap piece still looking for that but uh but all in all in all no one got hurt the boat survived so Good. it could have been a lot worse Good. still trying to get it fixed and darn it you had to 
finish the season by going to what boat now? Yeah, going over to one solo, you know? <laughs> you got to do what you got to do sometimes, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it, yeah, it was a weird summer. Two mask breaks in a couple weeks in that fleet, you know, because uh, Vertigo lost their rig two weeks before I lost mine. Yeah, so it was a weird uh it was a very little... eventful it season was. with two dismastings, a collision, and, uh, you know, Dustin wasn't racing, but he almost sank his boat yeah. out there, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, Juan Solo had a rescue out in Pin Cove. I mean, it's an uh, eventful summer, and that's forgetting all of the, you know, pandemic things that make everything even more difficult to run than normal anyways. Right. So, right. Yeah, eventful year, that's for sure. Yeah. Hopefully we've got all the excitement out of the way and we can just have some straight racing this yeah, summer. It's not normally like that, is it? No, it's pretty calm. Yeah, it's generally a very safe family kind of sport. It is. It's yeah. safer than driving a car. Oh, for sure. But um, I, I will say, I think one thing that, that people often forget is the two boats that broke their rigs were, were racing boats, right? Were pure racers, like uh, Vertigo, is a, you know, a custom sport boat, carbon fiber mast, super light. And then my boat is the old Olympic boat. So everything is as stripped down as possible. That mast is taller than the San Juan 24 mast by a couple feet ah. and weighs 30 pounds. I mean, it's it weighs nothing. So v it's very just... Very lightweight. Yeah. And, and rigged much more complex than... For sure. Than a family cruiser. Yeah, the tip of that mast moves forward and aft several feet, depending on your upland or downwind. Um, so those boats are are built a little lighter to get some more speed, but they're, that makes them a little more fragile. So if you make a mistake or if weather conditions change on you real quick or if something goes wrong, you're going to suffer a break every once in a while. So it happens. But, you know, the rest of these boats, like San Juan 24s and all of them, they're built so solidly because they're cruisers right racer cruisers right so you don't want your rig coming down when you're taking your family out for a sunday sail yeah. okay so let's talk a little bit about uh what you do with the youth you run, run the youth sailing program i yeah i coach the, the high school team mm -hmm. uh one of our one of my assistant coaches works the summer programs so I, i'm not as involved with that but uh yeah i i coach our high school team it's uh 20 people strong this year um 17, 18 people from Oak Harbor High School, uh, and then two South Loop Beach sa sailors. We're hoping to get a couple more and start a South Loop Beach sailing team. But, uh, but yeah, it's great. We race all around the Puget Sound, hoping to get racing in this spring. That COVID is making that a little more difficult than in than in other years. But we're hoping that things calm down enough or stay calm that we can get some races in. Yeah, and the boats that you're running are a little bit more durable than than the star. Yeah, a little more durable, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, they're just two-person boats, uh, FJs, they're called. Uh, every once in a while, we'll run a laser, a single-handed boat, but uh, these boats are, they're pretty bulletproof. I mean, they, they take them out in, in all sorts of stuff, and just two people, no spinnaker, just the main and the jib, and it's, they're all, they're all the same all over the country, so it's, it's purely on the skill of the sailor when, when you race those boats, which is always, always good to see especially for the high school sailors i saw a post the other day that kind of surprised me it's the middle of february and you guys are out there swimming we did yeah we had our, <laughs> our swim test that was what march 17th or february 17th yeah um we always do our swim test before we go sailing um, just to make sure com or, uh, the sailors are comfortable in the water they know the colds so that they come prepared um, I think some people don't necessarily realize how cold it is if they haven't been experienced in sailing before. Uh -huh. So they might not wear enough clothes. Um, but when you force them to get in the water, then they go home and reevaluate their clothing for the next time they go out. Um, and it's also peace of mind for me. If I have two or three boats go down at once, I have to go check on everyone. I oh, know yeah. that everyone's okay for you know a minute or two until I get around to them, mm -hmm. if, if it comes to that. So yeah. definitely peace of mind. And, you know, the... the national governing body makes us do it so that, yeah, that's yeah. my excuse when they're like why do we gotta go swimming it's february i'm like because my U.S. sailing tied. makes us do yeah. it yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was certified as a u.s sailing instructor mm -hmm. too and i uh it's a beautiful thing mm -hmm. it, it really is start start off by getting in the boat tipping it over yeah. getting wet now you don't have that fear to deal with because mm -hmm. you you've done it you know what it feels like you've righted the boat now you can focus on learning how to sail. Exactly. It. Tear the bandaid off. It's it's not as scary as it looks once you do it. It's just right. just part of the sport. So you got to get it out of the way. 
Today I'm sailing with Dave above, aboard Juan Solo. Juan Solo. Yeah. Yeah, so welcome. Uh, today uh, we're going to be going out to uh, the, almost not in the Pan Cove, we're going to be going out to Saratoga Passage. Um, the winds are forecasting from like uh, 11 knots to 24 knots, so it's going to be pretty gusty. Right now we have a big sea state that we're dealing with, uh, a lot of wind fetch. And uh, so the race committee is starting at the, the starting sequence in about uh, 15 minutes. We're going to go up to Snake Lombowie. We're going to round that and come back downwind. So it'll be a lot of fun today. So uh, buckle up. Here we go. <laughs> I'm Gabe, uh, sailing here with Dave today. I've been sailing on the boat for three years. I'm going to be in, uh, doing Fordak today, which is not my usual on this boat. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good time. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I, I skipper the schooner Suva. I've been doing that for about the last five years. And I've been wanting to race her, but I haven't felt comfortable racing. So I sp spent the last year coming out with this racing fleet and jumping from boat to boat because I want to learn from racing skippers. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been skipper and professionally off and on for almost two decades, but not in races. The rules are a little bit different and I'm not, yeah. not comfortable with that. So I wanted to go from boat to boat and learn, see what I could learn from all the different skippers. That's a great idea. And that gives you um, just different perspectives, Yeah, you know, and you learn something new from each one. We got a mix of different types of boats. We have old classics to uh, um, hand-built sport boats. And uh, we, we uh, have a really good time. Absolutely. I think uh, um, sailing su Suva is, is a great idea. I mean, the, the old classic schooners out there duking it out um, is a, a dream of mine. I, I would love that opportunity someday to, to be able to do that. So um, that's a great challenge. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that with you. Yep, great. So, so we race every Thursday night. Um, we welcome all different kinds of sailboats to come out and race with us. It's not uh, not just for the, the people that race, it's for cruisers and uh, new folks alike. So um, we make that a, 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 a open open invitation for those folks to come out and, and just sail with us. You know, we have a Windseeker program, which is not a necessarily a racing class, but it's a kind of cruise your boat fast class, if we will. Right. Yeah. And there's pretty much year-round activities for the racing. That's right. So in the uh, when when uh, the weather gets cold and it's in the off season, we actually do rules of racing here at the club, and uh, we we do education courses. We we uh, teach folks how to sail. Um, we invite them to our cruise. We we teach them you know on the race course. There's nothing better than learning how to sail than getting out there and doing it. You can read all the books you want. It gets you a nice start, but actually getting out there and, and applying um, some techniques is, is the best way to go. And I think racing is, a, is the, the fast track to get there. Yeah, agreed. You learn quickly. Yeah. So what does it take to go racing with the racing fleet? Whether you're crew or you have your own boat, you contact the sail fleet skipper, our captain here at the Oak Harbor Yacht Club, and uh, we set you up with a, a handicap. And so basically all boats are get assigned a handicap that way we know how well you do out in the race course. And um, we kind of give you kind of the lay, lay of the land, the, the kind of basic rules, and invite you to come out to the, the race course and uh, round the buoys with us. So it really um, doesn't take much to get started. It's just the willingness to come out and um, um, enjoy your boat. And if you don't have a boat, then there's great opportunities. You come with a smile, you come with an eager to learn and eager to help out. And that will get you a spot on a boat for sure. Especially if you're willing to commit to showing up regular. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. believe it or not, it's really hard for um, uh, skippers to find um, crew that can show up, you know, on a cons consistent basis. You know, that's, we all have our lives and, and jobs, but uh, if we can get those folks that want to come out and learn, those are the, the people to that will really excel in this in this sport yeah so so really all, all you need to do is show up on the dock on thursday night around five o'clock talk with dave here or, or shannon correct and yep. um 
or, or anybody on the dock and just ask you know who to talk to and they'll point you to to uh, the right person kind of thing Very cool. come out and give it a try um, and nine times out of ten you'll be hooked and yacht club membership is uh, not required not all. required no um, the old Carver yacht club is very inviting um, we encourage you to join the yacht club and join our fleet here and um, but it's not required so you know we would love to have you join us you know and and uh, um, the yacht club has great social um, benefits to it it's got great uh, reciprocal moorage um, it's a great clubhouse and, and a group of folks so um, it's a uh, it's definitely worth it there's definitely uh, benefits and privileges, you know, it, membership has its privileges. Indeed. And friendship. Yep. L lots of love around this place. Yep, that's right. Um, in our sail fleet, we actually have many families that actually join um, the race fleet as a whole crew. So, you know, it's a, it's a real family affair. And, mm -hmm. and so the, even the, the youngest to the oldest, they, they learn how to sail and race all at the same time. So it's a really good time for the whole family. Yeah, I can think of a couple big dogs out there towing their, <laughs> how's that work? <laughs> Little tugboat. Yeah, so their kids have grown up in the, in the boat, and uh, it's really neat to see, um, you know, photographs and videos of the kids steering, and, and uh, um, it's, you see future sailors right there. And then um, another boat we have is Argosia, and it's loaded with uh, the whole family, you know, a bunch of kids and, and uh, the two parents. And Yeah, it's really neat to see that. It's great to see our local, you know, kids grow up in the sail sailing classes from the youth sailing to the wildcat sailing, um, and just come out and enjoy their boats. And here we have um, one of those uh, youths just doing circles around us in their Hobie cat, making fun of us as we slowly go down the course. They're having a great time, um, and it's just fun to to see that next generation, you know, just just love the sport. Yeah, and they were they were literally sailing circles around us. The, the whole fleet. Now this looks like a fairly non-standard rig to me. That is correct. <laughs> this is what we're calling a chicken chicken maneuver where uh, the winds were pretty gusty that day where a spinnaker would have been too uh, much of, a, of an issue. That we were just trying to, uh, we had a small sail, head sail up and we were just trying to um, power up each puff and because there was a larger sea state and big puffs coming down and uh, um, it's definitely a dinghy maneuver <laughs> on a uh, on a keel boat. So um, it's kind of a combo here. Gabe, he um, definitely grew up in dinghies through college and um, really knows um, his stuff. I appreciate you taking the time to to sit down and talk with me a little bit about this and for letting me ride with you on your boat. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. I I I loved riding with you and and, and watching your interaction with the crew and, and the way you guys talked through oh there's a puff coming over here what are we going to do you know how are we going to handle this is great stuff yeah that's that last 10 percent yeah so great crews um kind of work together and and uh um sometimes they, they know each what each other is thinking and don't even have to speak mm -hmm. but communication is key you know out there in the big wind yeah one of the things that i noticed is the boats that are out in the front, they're talking about the, there's a puff over there, there's a current over there. We, let's tweak tweak the boat a little bit this way and that way. The boats that were towards the end of the pack, they talked about, what'd you do this weekend? <laughs> you know. <laughs> True. And, you know, there's some, some place in the middle for all that, you yeah. know. And uh, you know it's not all all serious and race ready, but you know when you're when you're trying to win a race and trying to to um, you know edge out your competitors, that's you got to do some of the 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 technical parts, yeah. you know, and have fun. And I got to say, I enjoyed every boat that I rode on. I'm sure you did. You know, uh, so some of them are are are, are geared very t very much towards winning the race. Others are just there to go sailing and enjoy the cruise and and camaraderie and that's okay and that's what the wind seekers and the old carver sail fleet is all about is really it's a it's a low-key um way to enjoy your boat yeah. you know so whatever level you like it's there for you indeed it is well thank you very much yeah thank thanks for having me it was great to look at it from a, a view i hadn't seen before so it was it was a good time thank you
What's our boat speed? Ludicrous speed.